Hi everybody, it's Barbara Brackman here. I certainly appreciate your interest in my new edition of the Encyclopedia of Peace Quilt Patterns. I thought people might like to know a little bit more about the history of how the Encyclopedia of Peace Quilt Patterns has evolved into a third edition. So I am going to give you a little bit of information about me and why I decided I would do this. You know, it evolved. I've always been fascinated by pattern here, polka dots especially, just fascinate me. But any repeat pattern just seems to really hold my interest. And I seem to have a real affinity for remembering pattern. Sometimes, you know, it can be a little bit irritating, but it's, it's, I guess, a gift. So all my life, I've been fascinated by different kinds of patterns. And this, the whole thing with the quilt pattern started, I had been making a few quilts many, many years ago when I was young and going to thrift stores, I found a little package of Kansas City Star newspaper patterns. And I became a collector, uh, which is another word for being a crazy, obsessive person, but it certainly has kept me entertained. I started with Kansas City Star Patterns, and I, I, I probably, there were 800 and all that you can collect, and I probably had 500. Um, my friend Louise Townsend and I used to spend a lot of our time sitting around the dining room table trading patterns like little kids trade baseball cards. I loved collecting them, and it was a, it was a nice hobby, but I collected every kind of quilt pattern, and, they, and they, you could find these in thrift stores scrapbooks, little packages, just maybe one or two, and I bought them all. And then, of course, you want to know where they are. If you want to find a pattern, how are you going to remember where it is? So I started looking at systems. I was lucky enough to live in Lawrence, Kansas, where Carrie Hall's blocks are at the university, the Spencer Museum at the University of Kansas. And one day I was sitting in an art history class and opened a drawer in the back of the room and it was full of these quilt blocks. And I recognized them because I had the Romance of the Patchwork Quilt book. Oh my goodness, this, this needs work. This needs some organizing. I never look at a pattern without thinking this needs some organizing. But my friend, Jean Mitchell, and a couple of others, we decided we would organize them for the university. And so we used Carrie Hall's system and sorted them out and uh, had a show. Someday we'll have another one of her blocks. But when I was working on this, I realized that Carrie's system, which is mostly by visuals or pattern names, did not really help because what if you didn't know the pattern? So I thought, what if you filed it by seam lines and you could find it as, say, a nine patch or a nine patch that was made up of, of diamonds or something like that? And what if my father was a computer programmer, so I thought, what if you gave it a number? And then instead of having to show someone a picture of a quilt, you could just say it's number 12 or something. So since this was my hobby, I made some index cards. I was gonna make a quilt in every pattern. And that's what Carrie Hall said she was gonna do too when she started. Well, that hasn't gotten done. I've done a lot more indexing than I have quilting. But I made many index cards and, and then some more, and I used to take these around with my friends and we'd identify patterns. And when I said take them around, I would take them on an airplane to Tennessee or things like that. The friend suggested that was not working as I only had one set of cards and it was getting bigger and heavier. So why didn't I draw them out and then photocopy copies for them? Well, that was a formidable task that hundreds of patterns had become thousands. But I did it, it kept me entertained. And I did it in eight photocopied volumes over maybe five or six years, beginning in 1979, I think. And you had two pages in your notebook. On the left was, oh, on the left was the name of the pattern, and on the right was a black and white drawing, a little ink drawing that I did of each pattern, filling in each of the, the triangles or squares with a pat a sort of a fabric pattern. You can see pattern is the word. Well, in 1993, the Paducah American Culture Society asked if, they, if I wanted to have it published as a book. Well, this would be so much nicer than trying to sell volumes uh, one at a time. 
and, and my friends at Joneses could get the volumes out of their attic. I didn't really have an attic. Um, so I agreed, of course, and this became the second edition. And it was really just a photocopy of the volumes, but all in one 551-page book. It cost about 35 to $40, as I recall. But in the past 10 years, the American Culture Society has gotten out of the book, the book printing business, as many people have, and so the book went out of print. Now, it's a useful book. People really want to know the name of a quilt pattern. And a lot of people really just like to look at quilt patterns. And so it has become one of the most requested out of print books at Amazon. They have an algorithm. They have a formula where they compare the number of requests they get for a book with the number of copies available. And then you get a ridiculous price based on you know, a computer's estimate of what that book is worth. It is not worth $919. Do not ever pay $919 for a book unless, of course, it actually was published in 1656, which means it was probably going to be worth that much. But this, this, you, I think you can still find used ones for $50 or $60. And I always get emails from people who score one in a garage sale. Um, but it's been out of print for a long time, which, of course, makes you say, well, and honey, be careful when you look at the book. So we went to other formats, and, and of course, it's a digital age. Electric Quilt converted it into a computer program for PCs. And it has been through a couple of editions of that because operating systems change. So we've sold block base for years. And as it says there on the box, there are 4,000 patterns in block base. And they redrew the pictures and they added color. And um, a great thing for me is that I can digitally, because I know this program well, I can digitally find things very easily. Plus, it will print out the pattern for it. So people can say, you know, I would sure like a pattern for number 1,526.5. And I can say, oh, just print it out in block base, 6 inches, 12 inches, whatever you like. But you can also identify the pattern source and learn something about those sources too, like the Aunt Martha Company and the Ladies Art Company. But obsolete... Obsolescence hits computer operating systems. So we are now between operating systems and reprogramming. So it's been out of stock for a year or so. And just like uh, an old digital, an old gramophone record, if you don't have a gramophone, you can't play it. So we're working on a new version of BlackBase. It's more complicated than I, well, no, nothing digitally is more complicated than I do. But it, it does involve a good deal of programming. And so when we had hoped this was going to be out at the same time as this book, but we're going to say next year. But Anne at the electric quilt, the boss, said, but since we've drawn all these patterns, why not a new edition of the book itself? I was thrilled. That's a formidable job to redraw all those patterns. But Anne put Sarah Suberling on the job, and she designed the book, and there it is, the third edition, which is going to be delivered in November. Now, there are, it's improved, new and improved, as you see on the lower left there. There are two pictures of each block, an outline you can shade, and then a color drawing that shows you pretty much how it was in the original publication. Most of these are published patterns, um, but I've added new patterns, especially patterns that I've never found published, but that are so common um, that people really, people really need them and the pattern needs a number of my estimation. Um, it's easier to read in this format too, because both the names and the pictures are on the same page. You can use it for many things to identify pattern names, which I think is, is one of the reasons people fail they need to have it. But as, if you're a quilt maker and you want to design your own, it's got thousands of ideas and uh, patterns you've never seen before and permutations of patterns you've never seen before. Plus, I use it a lot to create theme samples. 
I do a lot of block of the months on my blogs and uh, <clears throat> I'm a, a little girl on the left there in her in her sailor suit I decided she's looking for nautical in, so she can make a quilt for a boyfriend um, you can also do themes by block structures so the pattern pages are arranged with similar theme structures and if you want to do something simple you might choose Sawtooth stars, like the pink quilt there that I'm working, cranking out on my uh, mimeograph machine. I do a lot of theme samplers, as I say, and often I use names, but sometimes I'll use uh, the, the pattern structure too. So having this book back in print and having it new and improved with the color and easier to read, is just a thrill for me. And I have to say that my fairy godmother is Electric Quilt, who took on this enormous task. Uh, and I hope you will enjoy the new copies of the third edition. So thanks, EQ.